Thank you all for uh, joining our uh, afternoon uh, webinar. Uh, we will get starting in about a minute time. Thank you. Hello? Hey, Said. Yeah, hi. Uh, you might want to log out from the uh, from the demo uh, account. Okay. Log in with yours. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I did. I don't know how I can join that. You there? Yeah, with your own email address. Okay. The webinar ID is there, so okay. No problem. Okay. We have only one person, right? Uh, not anymore. I think so, yes. Yes, only one person for that. Do you know who's the who's the guy?
Okay, uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, we're gonna get starting. Um, this uh, afternoon's webinar is um, about equipment auto sizing. My name is uh, Dan Montano. I'm an application uh, specialist with uh, SolidCAD and um, I will be your uh, host this afternoon. Um, these are the three things that uh, I plan on, uh, on showing you. Uh, a brief uh, um, introduction of SolidCAD and flight software. Uh, we're going to look at the type of uh, equipment uh, currently available um, in the fluid flow that have uh, uh, auto sizing option enabled on them. And uh, we're going to go through uh, a few examples. For those of you who uh, do not know, uh, SolidCAD is uh, the first uh, Autodesk um, uh, Platinum Partner in Canada, currently member of the Cancel Group of Companies, and uh, we have the, uh, the largest technical and sales team um, in uh, uh, this space, and we are uh, uh, serving customers in uh, um, architecture, construction, engineering, um, civil infrastructure, planting process, manufacturing, media and entertainment businesses. At SolidCAD, uh, there are a number of uh, uh, services that uh, we provide to our customers, you know, from training, uh, BIM consulting, data management and collaboration, um, technology workflow assessments, uh, scan to BIM services, workflow optimization, um, customization and software development, uh, simulation and analysis, product lifecycle management, uh, technical supports, <clears throat> technical support for uh, a number of, uh, uh, of uh, software solution. And uh, we are uh, uh, helping our customers uh, uh, across Canada, currently 15 offices and 12 tra training facilities. As part of uh, Cancel, uh, we have access to a number of other uh, solutions from um, um, surveying and geomatics, um, uh, hardware, so high, uh, wide format plotters, um, 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 mapping and uh, GIS systems, um, printing solutions, uh, construction uh, supplies. And uh, at SolidCAD, we support uh, um, not just Autodesk software, but a number of uh, uh, specialized so solutions, uh, including FluidFlow, that um, uh, allow us to uh, help uh, our customers solve their day-to-day -day, um, uh, business problems. And we are uh, uh, the Canadian uh, distributors of uh, uh, fluid flow uh, uh, developed by Flight Software in Northern Ireland, uh, which is a company formed in 1984. And ISO 9001 uh, registered uh, software developer headquartered in Derry. Um, beside the Fluid flow, which is the uh, generic uh, hydraulic calculator uh, uh, that uh, we're going to be talking this this afternoon. Um, flight software has the ability of uh, developing uh, um, customized software solutions and uh, has already done this for a number of companies like Fort SPC, Sterling Fluid System, Weir Group. Here are some of the customer uh, uh, customers of. Uh, uh, flight software and hours uh, that use fluid flow uh, solution. And a couple of testimonials uh, from uh, our uh, direct customers here in uh, uh, Sarnia and uh, Sudbury in Ontario. Fluid flow currently at version 346 um, is uh, built. Um, Modularly uh, on the same interface, uh, uh, based off a number of uh, customizable databases, and um, it um, ha has a number of uh, uh, modules that uh, could be combined: um, liquid, uh, gas, non-Newtonian and slurry, so both settling and non-settling slurries, uh, two-phase gas and liquid, scripting. 
um, or dynamic analysis. All modules include thermal transfer, and um, uh, they, these modules uh, interact on the same flow sheet. So there's no need to uh, do data export or import or uh, um, you know, move between different uh, user interfaces. Uh, some other features of this uh, uh, solution, um, equipment auto sizing, which we're going to be talking about uh, this afternoon. Uh, in particular, um, the feedback from our customers is how easy it is to learn and use. And uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, Flight Software is um, a uh, ISO 9001 um, um, software company, uh, accredited software company. So that means uh, they have a uh, a very uh, strict and comprehensive quality assurance program uh, to to ensure uh, uh, accuracy of calculations. So let's uh, take a look at uh, what components we can auto size. Uh, this is uh, the current list: so um, uh, pipes, uh, boosters, uh, so pumps, uh, fans, um, PD pumps, and and so on, we'll look at uh, uh, each, uh, each category uh, specifically. Control valves and uh, safety devices, rupture discs and uh, relief valves. Uh, and uh, obviously one of the reasons we go for the auto sizing option is the, the ability of uh, reducing the amount of iterations and trial and error uh, that um, uh, designer uh, needs to go through come up with a viable solution. So let's uh, talk about uh, pipe sizing first. Uh, currently, yeah, there are three methods uh, implemented. So uh, um, the uh, default one, and uh, the one that uh, is uh, uh, it's, uh, used for uh, um, liquid and gas, uh, is the economic pipe diameter model um, developed by uh, General uh, quite a while back, 1937. Um, this allows you to extract a, um, an uh, um, economic velocity and an exact diameter uh, from your uh, calculations, as we'll, you'll see later on. Uh, a couple other methods implemented currently uh, by a known uh, pressure uh, loss and pressure gradient, and also by design velocity. So uh, these would be um, also uh, available in your, uh, uh, in your inputs, in your pipe inputs. The economic pipe diameter model um, uh, looks at uh, you know, calculating uh, uh, minimum diameter that uh, um, you know, this complicated formula will be, will be calculated based off of. Um, it uh, considers uh, installation costs, um, the um, amount of uh, time the plant is operating per year, um, uh, energy costs, um, uh, pump efficiency, and so on. Um, this is the dialog box in fluid flow where users are uh, uh, able to um, define even their own uh, pipe uh, materials and uh, um, come up with uh, uh, realistic values of these parameters. Uh, this is this list that you see here is out of the box uh, fluid flow. So no customization in this case. In terms of um, boosters, so uh, pumps, fans, and compressors. So this is currently available for centrifugal pumps. For uh, positive displacement pumps, um, rotating and reciprocating, and for fans. And um, uh, we're looking at uh, um, sizing based on a design flow, so flow rate, and uh, also as a second option, uh, design for uh, pressure rise. Um, this way we can uh, find out the uh, duty point, uh, duty pressure rise, uh, duty uh, NPSH available uh, of the pump, and then from there on, um, go on and, and, uh, and choose uh, a pump um, 
ideally uh, one that uh, can work in the in and around the best efficiency point as i mentioned earlier um, uh, fluid flow is uh, based uh, uh, of a number of databases um, uh, there will be a, a boosters database where users can uh, create their own equipment and uh, input uh, um, the proper uh, pump curves um, out of the box again uh, the software comes with uh, about 1400 fluids and uh, uh, many thousands of uh, uh, equipment uh, um, uh, in uh, in these databases in terms of um, sizing of orifice plates and uh, size changing devices so uh, the current version 346 were supporting um, uh, thin and thick orifices so uh, thin sharp edged orifice based on ISO 5167 thick orifices with a uh, length uh, uh, over diameter ratio over uh, 0 0.015 and for these two we can um, um, calculate uh, uh, flange tap losses um, uh, d and uh, uh, half d tap losses uh, k values and equivalent lengths uh, we also support inline nozzles based on uh, two models the um, instrumentation uh, society of america um, 1932 uh, nozzle or ISO standard 5167 again and the long radius model also we support the venturi tubes uh, in this uh, auto sizing uh, process and again we're looking to size for flow rate and for pressure uh, loss in terms of uh, control valves uh, we support uh, both flow control valves and pressure control valves as well as self-acting uh, pressure reducer and sustainers and the self-acting differential pressure controllers so this way uh, fluid flow calculates uh, uh, the uh, flow coefficient and um, uh, it's a flow coefficient for the defined uh, design operating conditions there so uh, find this way the control valve set point uh, here's an example where um, uh, this uh, flow uh, controller is automatically uh, set to uh, auto size on the first uh, uh, simple network there the design flow is 10 cubic meters per hour a calculated CV 15.859 US gallons per minute over uh, PSI for uh, a static pressure loss of uh, 768 psi and in the second case based on this information we go and uh, uh, select a particular uh, model there and uh, that's going to give us a valve opening percentage of 32.5 percent in terms of uh, automatic sizing of relief devices so first of all why would uh, uh, we would want to do this uh, for both bursting disc and uh, relief valves um, a number of reasons uh, finding the, the proper the correct discharge areas and choose uh, from a standard size if possible evaluate um, inlet and outlet piping diameters um, get information about the uh, phase fluid phase so there could be a a phase change flashing across the uh, relief valve confirm mass flow rate that can be passed through relieving stream uh, and uh, evaluate pressures um, two calculation methods supported currently for liquid and gas only the ISO 4126 and um, including uh, for the two phase including flashing the uh, american petroleum institute rp 520. Um, it will be a matter of uh, uh, specifying the um, over pressure allow input so the uh, uh, value over the maximum allowable uh, working pressure may wp which um, in the current uh, 
uh, implementation uh, could be set to either none, sole device 10%, multiple devices 16%, and external fire 21%. And for calculating from that uh, a discharge coefficient and uh, calculated size uh, as well as calculated size at um, MAWP and uh, the software will give us the next standard orifice size. Let's take a look at uh, some examples now. Um, going to bring my fluid flow over on the shared screen. Um, let's uh, see here. My fluid flow is now on the shared screen. Um, so the first thing that uh, I like to, to show you here is uh, the pipe auto sizing. Uh, we're going to build uh, uh, quickly a, a simple network with main header and some offtakes. And um, you know, this way you get uh, you get to see the software in action. So I mentioned the uh, modular structure um, of the software based on uh, different uh, uh, license codes and modules: you know, liquid, gas, um, uh, non-Newtonian, and a variety of databases that um, uh, are available out of the box and uh, fully customizable. So you know, if I'm looking at let's say uh, a fluids database. You'll see here a very large uh, uh, list um, and different fluids are available uh, for um, calculations in different modules. You'll see the liquid, gas, or two-phase uh, buttons being lit there in terms of uh, what uh, uh, type of calculations we can, uh, we can use. Um, similarly, your or have access to a database of pipes of different materials, um, different, um, uh, let's say, uh, boundary types, boosters or so, um, centrifugal pumps, compressors, um, positive displacement pumps, uh, size changes, and so on. So. Um, let me take a look at the pipe sizing data here. So this is uh, the window I was showing you earlier, where uh, parameters used in the uh, economic uh, size model um, for pipe sizing. Uh, it's going to it's going to be needed to to uh, you know, have a a, a pretty good um, accurate representation of these parameters, you know, specifically in terms of energy costs and uh, uh, operating days per year uh, and so on. So once these values are uh, typed in properly, and these are again out of the box available, um, the um, uh, minimum diameter uh, from the general equation can be extracted. So let's see how uh, we can build something, uh, uh, something like this. Um, I will uh, start with um, uh, pipe, steel pipe. Actually, let's start with a boundary. Um, so let's do a, um, uh, for example, a um, uh, known or assigned uh, pressure initially. Okay. And uh, we could go and uh, uh, basically connect these with pipes. Okay. You can see automatically an open uh, pipe uh, uh, component uh, from here. If I uh, create another um, pipe segment, that open pipe becomes uh, an elbow. If I connect the pipe segment um, on um, um, the lower side of the um, of the uh, pipe, it uh, converts or adds a uh, automatically a T. So there are uh, provisions here to uh, basically um, simplify the user input and make sure that uh, uh, it's quite uh, it's quite easy to 
to define uh, your network. There are also a number of uh, defaults that you can go and uh, uh, control. Um, and um, based on those, you uh, have the ability of, uh, um, let's say, in the, uh, basically, uh, have the ability of, uh, of fully controlling the um, most used type of uh, and size of, of component. Um, and uh, this way, uh, a little input will be needed. So, so currently, let's go and uh, um, let's say here, we have, um, um, let's say, uh, pressure input. Let's go for atmosphere. 1.3 and we have some open pipes here. So let's say we're going to select multiple select these pipes and let's make them a little bit longer. So I start with a with a uh, standard pipe size and uh, as I go along and add um, uh, components, uh, these connect uh, uh, off branches, that standard size gets uh, uh, split. So right now I'm going to say, uh, uh, let's say all these are uh, 10 feet. Okay. You have uh, opportunity here to also use um, other shapes. You know, so you could uh, you could use this for uh, uh, ducting as well. And let's say I want to show some of these some of these uh, values on screen. So for example, I like to show the fluid type. I like to show the pressure. Right. So I'm going to hit calculate right now. Okay. And you're going to see some messages, high pipe velocity, for example, based on that uh, um, uh, condition. So when I'm selecting this component here under results, you're going to see, based on the fact that I'm using the so for sizing model, I'm using the economic velocity, okay, as opposed to a, a fixed uh, design velocity or a fixed pressure gradient, which we talked about. So um, uh, the economic velocity allows me to calculate here the so-called exact economic size and um, uh, the economic velocity versus the uh, current velocity, which would be right here, out velocity. So in velocity, uh, start node, out velocity, end node on the pipe. So the calculated velocity currently is uh, 16.9 feet per second. Economic velocity will be uh, about four feet per second for this exact economic size at four and a quarter inches. So that's based on uh, general equation. So what happens here is um, um, you are now able to uh, go back and modify uh, the pipe size uh, to the indicated value and recalculate the model. So currently now the um, out velocity uh, is closer to the economic velocity. And there will be um, other situations here where you have other uh, pipes uh, with the same uh, message in terms of high pipe velocity. So you know, if we're to, um, let's say, have as a design uh, condition um, a, a, a constant uh, flow rate at these outlets, which currently are open pipe, uh, you'll have to you know, implement other me measures of controlling the flow than just the um, the pipe sizing. But that's a, that's a good start um, to uh, to work to work with. So basically, um, it's a matter of uh, of looking at how far off you are in terms of the calculated velocity versus the economic velocity and how far off your um, uh, current size of the pipe is from the uh, exact economic size. Now, these warnings, uh, as a side note, the high pipe velocity warnings here, uh, there could be, um, you have the opportunity of, uh, of um, yeah, tweaking the, um, the liquid limits, gas limits, and uh, two-phase limits in terms of uh, minimum and maximum uh, uh, pipe velocity. Okay. Similarly, you have a, a control valve, minimum, maximum uh, percentage open, you know, past which or under which uh, uh, the, the control action is uh, 
is not possible or it's uh, it's difficult. So uh, that's basically um, it's a pretty simple process. Uh, you're uh, um, you're looking at um, 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 based on the uh, on the input. You're looking at um, um, first of all making sure you're not over constraining the model right by let's say uh, applying uh, multiple um, um, uh, conditions of the same type. So uh, if I'm uh, indicating let's say uh, I could uh, change the component here uh, type and say um, I'm assigning a flow and uh, let's say uh, uh, 50 uh, let's go for example a large number of units available as well let's go 50 cubic meters per hour right? into the network not out of the network right? so um, that means uh, uh, even though I would like to have a constant um, um, a constant um, uh, flow on the outside um, if I'm setting this up uh, the same type right um, in out of the network at let's say uh, uh, equal uh, flow at uh, 10 meter, cubic meters per hour then uh, uh, I'm now I'm um, looking into a, an over constrained model right? so um, input and output of the same type so uh, that's basically something we we want to avoid uh, in general uh, and um, right, so we have now a, a known pressure uh, let's say maybe a, a slight uh, back pressure on the on the system there so 1.1 uh, atmosphere for example right so now we have proper flow direction so um, that's um, uh, that's that's something that um, uh, you want to uh, look at in terms of uh, economic velocity, uh, exact economic size, and uh, um, um, change the uh, pipe size based on based on that kind of input. So if I'm looking at um, let's say that particular uh, model, I've added a few more things here. I've added um, uh, some other control measures like uh, orifice uh, sizes. So these orifices uh, at this point uh, are um, size for flow. Okay, and as uh, as um, uh, calculated value based on the auto size option, we have the um, size of the orifice. Uh, given by the software so uh, 1.09 inches 1.2 inches 1.12 uh, here i have uh, used a different uh, uh, flow control method so i apply the flow controller again and say we want to ensure that we have uh, um, equal flow on the out um, uh, on the outlets on the uh, uh, those branches and uh, by assigning uh, an automatically sized um, uh, flow control design flow of 10 cubic meters, uh, we we ensure that that's exactly what happened. And here is a um, there is a um, uh, pump that is now again auto sized for um, uh, size for flow. Uh, that would be the uh, input flow that we have uh, uh, started with, 50 cubic meters per hour and uh, uh, back pressure on the pipe inlet. So the combination of uh, um, economic uh, velocity um, uh, pipe sizing model and uh, auto, auto sizing of components, um, orifices and uh, um, flow controllers. Let's uh, take a look at uh, uh, another system uh, here. So basically um, uh, a similar process uh, where you have um, you have um, um, the need of, of balancing uh, the flow. Uh, there are some heat exchangers here of, of uh, known uh, um, uh, heat uh, transfer um, and we're applying um, we're applying some um, orifices um at uh, uh, a calculated uh, uh, mass flow 
and uh, the software will will generate the, the size of the uh, of the orifice to ensure that uh, we have balanced uh, flow through them. Um, on top of that, we um, ensure that the flow is uh, through a, a pump, and uh, that duty flow and duty pressure rise are uh, calculated from the uh, auto size. So that allows us to you know go back and uh, look at uh, let's say a manufacturer's catalog and uh, uh, find a suitable pump pump uh, for that um, uh, for that system um, and here's an example uh, of uh, centrifugal pump let's go back to fluid flow an example of centrifugal pump where um, um, we uh, it's basically the the two sides of the same coin if you want uh, we're sizing for flow initially, so here's uh, 10 cubic meters per hour. Okay. Uh, red dot is the discharge side, and uh, we're extracting from that the pressure rise, uh, pump head, 1726 psi, and the NPSH available, 32.8 uh, um, uh, feet of fluid. Um, these results could be easily changed in other uh, unit types um, you have access to uh, various units under uh, result units here and you can also save your own environment so here's a npsh uh, a unit uh, meters of fluid or feet of fluid um, flow kilograms per second or uh, all sorts of other uh, units available. <clears throat> so based on this you know, uh, duty point, we can go and uh, uh, find uh, there is a uh, pump performance tool here. Uh, we can go and find uh, uh, a suitable a suitable pump from the uh, database based on the um, uh, requirements, uh, calculated requirements. So that. In this first example, we have uh, size for flow as an option. On the second one, we have size for pressure rise. So in this case, we say, okay, well, the pressure uh, rise needs to be a certain value. And the results here, uh, we're calculating the, um, we're calculating the um, duty flow and uh, uh, duty pressure rise there. So, as I mentioned, two sides of, uh, of the same coin. And um, lastly, um, here's a, an example of uh, a relief valve auto sizing. So, this is uh, an example from the uh, API uh, uh, standard 520 uh, exercise uh, there uh, regarding. Um, um, the calculation of um, <clears throat> um, um, uh, of um, uh, relief valve uh, 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 diameter. So uh, what we have is um, uh, as inputs we have. Um, let's take a look at the model here. Uh, the model is right here. So uh, we have a mixture of fluid at, at inlet, um, uh, in butane mixed. And if we're taking a look at the fluid database, let's see how that has been defined. I'm searching for that particular mixture. Here it is. And it's a matter of uh, adding existing uh, um, liquids, uh, fluids, and uh, uh, defining the percentage uh, of each by either uh, weight or mole, and uh, uh, specifying if this is a liquid phase only, gas phase, or uh, it could be involved in a, a two-phase uh, calculation. So this particular uh, mixture will have uh, uh, its properties automatically calculated um, 
based on uh, uh, mixture rules, standard mixture rules. Uh, this is all done uh, automatically by the uh, by the software. So the input um, uh, fluid is uh, this mixture at uh, 670 uh, kilopascal absolute uh, uh, pressure and uh, 348. Uh, Kelvin uh, degrees Kelvin temperature that's a relieving temperature uh, the valve set here it is uh, let's take a look at the inputs first so it's set to automatically sized and um, for uh, pressure loss uh, we have uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, two calculation models um, uh, the API uh, supports uh, uh, potential phase change so two phases. So uh, the set pressure is uh, 75 psi gauge. That's the design pressure of the equipment, uh, and the permitted accumulation uh, is 10% uh, over MAWP. Um, design flow rate, so mass flow rate here, 53,500 pounds per hour. Um, what else we have a discharge coefficient of 0 0.975 so the software will calculate uh, compressibility z of 0 0.84 uh, uh, under right here yep and um, in this case we are ignoring the uh, potential heat transfer um, so um, uh, the uh, if I'm to go back to this, so that area calculation, uh, it's done um, and, uh, uh, in the auto sizing equipment. And the calculated size here is uh, slightly larger uh, than the manual calculation from the API document. Uh, so uh, still within uh, less than 1% variation. So uh, uh, quite accurate uh, result at uh, 4.98 square inches calculated one um, in, uh, in the, the API document is 493 squared inches yeah so um, uh, you can see how these values are, uh, are matching very very closely and based on that the uh, next size up from a standard orifice size is uh, uh, P so if I would go and uh, under inputs for that uh, relief valve I would go and uh, turn off automatic size then I would go and uh, select uh, proper uh, uh, orifice here based on uh, our calculations and so that would be the next size up okay so um, that's uh, that's that's it for today um, I hope uh, you found this interesting. Uh, you can go uh, to fluidflowinfo.com uh, free trial and uh, get your 14 days trial. Uh, we're uh, open to your questions. Uh, if you have any, I hope you have typed them in in the chat window by now. If not, uh, you can uh, take a screenshot of this slide and uh, uh, use the email addresses to inquire about the solution. I uh, hope to see you at our next uh, webinar, uh, July 9th. Uh, it's about uh, settling slurries. Thank you and uh, have a great uh, rest of the afternoon.